So in today's video, I'm going to be previewing Bradford City versus Swindon Town and then the second part of today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys my Game Week 12 League 2 score predictions. If you do go on to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could turn it 80 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get a comment in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know down below your score prediction for this match and what would your starting 11 be as well is going to be a massive change over at Bradford City over the next coming days obviously Mark Hughes was sacked on Wednesday night it's been a very busy week or so for me personally so I do apologize about the lack of content on the channel and across my second and third channels as well I can only apologize as well to the tier 3 channel members from Monday everything should hopefully be back to normal but bear with me for the time being I really do apologize but Mark Hughes was sacked Kevin McDonald takes over as interim player manager but it sounds very likely that he won't be doing much of the playing while he is currently in this role but he said he won't be wearing a suit and anyone who calls him gaffer will be getting a fine in there as well but make sure to drop a like on there for me subscribe if you're new as well and let's get into it now i'm also more than aware there was no six things that we learned video from the tramia defeat on tuesday obviously that would have been uploaded on the wednesday i had a very busy day on wednesday and obviously i saw the mike hughes news i then couldn't get that out until five o'clock on thursday morning so it's just been very busy i simply haven't had the time and my schedule compared to frank's schedule even corbin's schedule it hasn't been able to line up and get a video out so I will unfortunately have to miss that one out. But we're here to preview the Swindon game. And the setup, once again, is absolutely horrendous. But I've got all the information down here. So if I am looking down, I can only apologise. But my team, Bradford City, we currently sit 18th in the table. After 11 games, we've got three wins, four draws and four defeats. Scoring 12 goals and conceding 14. Which leaves us on a minus two goal difference and 13 points. Our last couple of matches then have been a loss, a loss, a win, a draw and a draw. Then last couple of matches, then being a 2-1 defeat away at Tramia Road. Overs, a 3-1 defeat at home to Walsall FC, a 2-0 defeat at home to Middlesbrough in the third round of the AFL Cup, a 4-1 win away at Newport County, a 1-1 draw at home to Harrogate Town and a 1-1 draw at home to Grimsby Town. If we compare that then to at Swindon Town, they currently sit 6th in the Skybet League 2 table. After 10 games they've got 5 wins, 4 draws and only the 1 defeat, scoring 27 goals. That is the most in the whole league. They've conceded 17 as well which leaves them on a positive 10 goal difference the joint best in the league with AFC Wimbledon. That also leaves them on, I think that's is that 19 points there with their last couple of matches being a loss, a win, a draw, a win and a win. So their most recent match was actually their first defeat of the season. That was a 3-1 defeat away at Notts County. They also had a 2-1 win at home to Grimsby, a 2-2 draw away at Morecambe, a 2-0 win at home to Walsall and a 5-3 win at home to Sutton United. Now obviously we sent Jake Young out on loan to Swindon in the summer. Apparently he had a fallout with Mark Hughes. He's gone there He's absolutely set the world on fire so far. I know he's not played over the last couple of matches, I don't believe, but obviously won't be available for selection for this one with him obviously coming from... Bradford City on loan to Swindon but it'll be interesting to see now under a new manager will he get recalled in January and will he actually get played in his correct position as a striker rather than a left attacking midfielder but he's had a great start to the season as well as Dan Kemp massive massively talented footballer is Dan Kemp I'm a big big fan of him and I was really surprised to see MK Dons let him go out on loan they're currently sat 11th in the table MK Dons no win in their last five picking up two defeats in that time as well so they could really do with a player of Dan Kemp's quality at the moment I personally believe he's one of the best players in the whole division I know a lot of people might not give him the credit he deserves because he's not like a Macaulay Langstaff or Paul Mullen and Andy Cook type of player but Dan Kemp for me is a very very special player. Now we're going to get into the team though that I would go with if I was Kevin McDonald. Now me personally I don't think McDonald's going to do anything too drastic because if he goes and drops someone like a Sam Stubbs or an Andy Cook and then in a week or two's time when he's got to be playing with them again they might cause a little bit of friction there so I don't think he's going to do anything drastic. I personally think he probably will stick with some sort of a 4-3-3 4-2-3-1 system and I have gone with the 4-2-3-1 formation in goal, I've gone with Harry Lewis. It was another poor game from him on Tuesday night. Yes, he saved a penalty, but that first goal was certainly his worst mistake of the season so far. Absolutely shocking. I personally think he should be doing better with the second goal as well, if I'm being honest. Game beat from outside the box at your near post is simply not good enough. But we don't have any other options. Heath Richardson and Colin Doyle are not good enough. They're not better than Harry Lewis, so he can make as many mistakes as he wants at the moment. Yes, he's got a lot of credit in the bank from last season, but last season's last season. Now, we need to focus on this season. We need to get another keeper in as well to really push him 
and challenge him in my opinion but on his day he still can be a very very good goalkeeper we've just not seen that all too much so far this season and he is making a lot of mistakes into the back four then at right back I've gone with Mr Consistent in Brad Halliday like I say Mr Consistent very good defensively in my opinion the best right back in the whole division absolutely fantastic going forward as well nice assist for him on Tuesday night great ball in and it's obviously a fantastic header from Andy Cook and Halliday for me just absolutely has to stay in this side into the two centre backs then first I've gone with Matty Platt I thought he was fairly solid on Tuesday night you know over the last couple of games I've been calling for him to be dropped on Tuesday I thought he was fairly solid and I thought he didn't have too bad of a game so I'd stick with him at centre half and partnering him I have gone with Sam Stubbs now there was a lot of debate on social media more in Stubbs' favour really obviously post full time against Tramir the fans were singing he getting sacked in the morning he didn't get sacked in the morning he got sacked in the evening but Stubbs came over waving his arms over at the fans and at the time I personally I'm not gonna lie to you I personally felt quite aggrieved by that but then seeing other people's opinions on it saying that you know that's what you really want from your captain defending their manager unlike what Small does where he just puts his head down and walks straight down the tunnel you know it was nice to see something a little bit different a bit of personality really from the players for once and the players probably knew after Tramia that he was going to be sacked so I can understand from Stubbs's point of view but obviously the fans don't know that they just want to vent their frustration and anger after spending their money traveling all that way on a Tuesday night you know you can understand I think why the fans were so aggrieved after such a underwhelming result and a not particularly great performance but we'll move on then to left back I have gone with Liam Radog Lewis Richards I don't believe will be available for this one he might hopefully be back for next week I'm not really too sure but Radog to be fair to him hasn't been too bad you know going forward you know what you're going to get with Radog not too much defensively hasn't been too bad when in these games that he has played but I thought on Tuesday night it certainly wasn't his greatest game in my opinion I think the quicker Lewis Richards is back the better because I just personally don't think Rydalg is good enough, if I'm honest. Moving on then into our two holding midfielders. Now, I'm pretty sure the two that I've picked here are the only two that are actually available at the moment. Obviously, Alex Patterson picked up another injury on Tuesday night. Looks like it could be the opposite hamstring to the one that he did most recently as well, which is quite frustrating. And obviously, Kevin McDonald has basically ruled himself out as being unavailable and he wants to focus more on the managing side of things rather than the coaching side of things. But firstly, I have gone with Richie Small. Then I would not give him the captain's armband. I have stuck with Sam Stubbs as my captain but small for me I think deserves to come back into the side with our lack of options at the moment I know we're at home and he doesn't really get along too well with the core of Bradford City's home fans especially at Valley Parade but me personally I think this is the sort of game that you need to bring him back in for someone who's going to stick himself about put a few tackles in and partnering him I've gone with Alex Gilead we missed his energy on Tuesday night why on earth Daniel Yugoke was playing in central midfield I mean that alone was a very sackable offence for me when Gilead came on he showed good energy I think them two had a good partnership last season and like I say if they can both start contributing in more goals and assists, especially Gilead. I certainly think them two could work quite well, especially with obviously Patterson being out injured for the moment. Into the front three then, behind the striker, on the right wing, I've gone with Adam Wilson, his full, uh, first full debut for Bradford City, and I was really impressed with what I saw from him. He looked to pick up the ball, take his men on, get some nice crosses into the box. Yes, every now and again it didn't work, but I thought overall it was a pretty impressive display from Adam Wilson, so I'd like to see him stay into the side. In that number 10 role then, I've gone with Jamie Walker, your only other real option is Emmanuel Sadeem, and I don't think Walker was too bad on Tuesday night if I am being honest I don't think he played too poorly whatsoever so me personally I'd like to see him keep his place in the side and on the left wing I've gone with something a little bit rogue I've gone with Tyler Smith in the end now I think he needs to come back into the side I think we need to take a little bit of pressure off Andy Cook I called him to play attacking midfield against Tramia now in this one I'm calling him to play on that left wing I'm pretty sure Rayhan Tullock was not involved in training today or that is certainly what reports were saying on Twitter from someone who went down and watched training Rayhan Tullock was not there Chisholm Afoka hasn't really impressed so far so Smith for me, yes he's playing slightly out of position and I like my wingers to be inverted so I wouldn't put a point in or anyone like that on the left wing like a door. I don't think also a train today as well so I'd stick with Smith on at that left hand side and up front I've obviously gone with Andy Cook five league goals for him now this season he's got another one on Tuesday night an absolutely brilliant header great balling from Brad Halliday and a fantastic header from Andy Cook doing what he does best so for me personally I'd like to see him lead the line once more on the bench then for me that I'd leave Colin Doyle Jonathan Tompkinson Kieron Kelly Emmanuel Sidibe Bobby Pointer Chisholm Afoka and Matt Derbyshire the players currently unavailable are Lewis Richards Alex Patterson Clark Adaw and Rayhan Tullock are personally believe that neither of them actually trained today so I don't think they will be involved. Harry Chapman and also Viden Oliver which means the players who would miss out through selection then would be Heath Richardson, Harvey Road, Daniel Yugoke, Ash Taylor, Kevin McDonald and Dylan Yumbe. Now let's get into my game week 12 at League 2 score predictions. Starting out then with Accrington Stanley versus Forest Green Rovers I'm going to go with a 2-1 home win for Stanley. Barrow AFC versus Knox County I'm going to go with a shock 1-0 home win for the Bluebirds. Bradford City versus Swindon Town I'm going to go with a 2-1 away 
away win for the Robins. Colchester United versus Morecambe FC. I'm going to go with a 2-0 home win for Cole U. Crawley Town versus Wrexham AFC. I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw. Gillingham FC versus MK Dons. I'm also going to go with a 1-1 draw. Mansfield Town versus AFC Wimbledon. Obviously a bit of a top of the table clash. Certainly the two teams who are up there at this moment in time. I'm going to go with a 2-1 home win for the Stags. Newport County versus Harrogate Town. I think finishes in a 3-1 win for the Welsh outfit. Salford City versus Crew Alexandria. I'm going to go with a 2-1 home win for Salford. It feels like at the moment every game Salford play seems to be at home. I'm not really too sure why that is. Stockport County versus Doncaster Rovers. I think finishes in a comfortable 4-1 home win for County. Sutton United versus Walsall FC. I think finishes in a 2-1 away win for the Saddlers. Pressure is really starting to build on Matt Gray at the moment. I don't think they've picked up a win all season so far. But me personally, I think it will be another defeat for them in this one. And finally, Tramia Rovers versus Grimsby Town. I think finishes in a 2-2 draw. But I am going to leave it there though for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could join at 80 likes, as I said at the start of today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get commenting as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know down below your score prediction for this match. What would your starting 11 be as well? Apologies again about the lack of content across all of my channels at the moment. I'm very, very busy, but like I say, Monday will be back. Tier 3 channel members, don't worry, you'll get six videos this month. Obviously, we only had to the two last month, so I can only massively apologise, but please bear with me for this moment in time. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all tomorrow for the match day vlog. Peace.